Hi there, and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory. It's Thursday, and today we're going to do some drawing. As you saw the last time we got together, which was two weeks ago, we skipped a week, but two weeks ago was World B Day, not B Day, B Day, and we drew bees from our imaginations. And I love to see all the different ways that we all interpret the same input, all the different kinds of bees, cartoony bees, realistic bees, fun bees, serious bees, hardworking bees, lots of bees, bees with letters, bees without, and uh, it was fantastic to see. So I'm glad to see you all here. Catherine, nice to see you back. Chris Seidel, full of jest as per usual, um, and some new people too. So it's great to have you all here. And for those of you who are brand new to Sketch With that, what's this thing called? Draw With Me. For those of you who are brand new, let me explain how it works. Basically, we just kind of draw something. This is a time to have an appointment with yourself for, I don't know, 30, 45, 60 minutes, depending on how things go. And we just hang out, we chat, we draw. I'll give you a little assignment. I'll do the assignment along with you. It's not really a drawing lesson per se, but I think the best lesson is to just draw. So um, you can see what I do. I'll see maybe what you do if you share it with me on uh, Instagram or Facebook or in the schoolyard. But basically, it's time to hang out. So those of you who have been here many times before, you know the drill. So... Um, all you'll need today is a pen, some paper, ideally in sketchbook form, but not essential. And if you'd like a color, it could be in watercolor, it could be, I'm going to be using just a plain old colored pencil, a red one, and that's really all you'll need. So it's going to be a pretty simple day, and we're going to be using drawing from our imaginations. Not even imagination so much as probably memory. It won't be challenging, I promise you. We'll be drawing something that you know. And if you don't, who cares? It doesn't really matter. You'll be figuring it out. So, all right, let's figure it out, what we're gonna do. Um, what did I wanna talk about next? Oh yes, um, I wanted to remind you that for the first time in world history, I am teaching a workshop. And that workshop is about how to draw with this, which is a dip pen. So it's a pen with a nib on the end and you dip it into ink. And it's a, kind of a lost art. And I have uh, retrieved it from obscurity, f at least from my own practice. And we're gonna be drawing together. We are going to be uh, writing together. We'll be practicing some lettering. Um, and we'll learn how to use this incredibly versatile tool. It's an amazing tool that f has been around for hundreds of years for good reason. And it is something that um, is a little intimidating, I know. It's a little messy, it's a little, cr a little has a mind of its own, but I'm going to show you how to use it properly. And we'll have a lot of fun doing it. We'll do some exercises. We'll do a few different kinds of drawings. Nothing super challenging. It's really not about doing an excellent drawing. It's about learning how to use an excellent tool. And it'll be, um, well, let me show you what it's gonna be like. I wanna let you in on a creative secret. There's a tool that artists used for thousands of years to make incredibly expressive, elegant, and beautiful drawings in ink and watercolor, even in tea and coffee. And today, it's almost been forgotten. It's called the dip pen. In a special live two-hour workshop, I'm gonna teach you how to draw and write beautiful letters with this amazing tool. We'll make some great drawings and letter the alphabet and a quotation. You don't need much in the way of drawing or calligraphy experience to have a great time at this workshop. And you'll come away excited and confident about adding a dip pen and lots of nibs to your art kit. I hope you'll join me. I do. I hope you'll join me on Saturday, June 12th. 
So it's coming up. It's coming up. It's in, what, what is it, nine days? God, I just got the butterflies saying that. Nine days! Yes, so it's going to be a, a really fun workshop. We're using a new tech, tech platform, which will be much easier to use, much more reliable. And I'm hoping that you will be happy about that. If you've ever struggled a little bit with technology in the past, this is going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, so yeah, so dip pens are uh, just a really flexible, interesting thing to use. And when it comes to lettering, I'm not a calligrapher. As you saw in the video, I do kind of my own version of fancy lettering that you can make up your own version too. So that's what we're going to do. And um, Connie just signed up. Add a girl. It's going to be really fun. I think if you've never taken a workshop before, uh, a live workshop with me. Well, you've never taken a workshop with me, probably, unless you took the fountain pen workshop. But it was me and somebody else, Kosha. Um, but this is just going to be undiluted Gregory for a couple hours. Is it a couple hours? Maybe it's even longer. It's. I think the whole workshop is going to be close to three hours because we're really going to get into it so that you can emerge completely transformed, clutching onto this new tool and... Uh, heading out into the world with that. So, um, so yeah, so what else? Um, there's a little bit of prep to do. It's not much. It's basically just uh, cleaning your nib, get, making sure you have the right art supplies. They're easy to get. And uh, so I would sign up for this soon. Um, Marilyn is complimentary. She liked my class called Be an iPad Artist. And uh, that was a similar kind of class in the sense, well, that was a class, this is a workshop, but I think it was similar in the sense that I like to teach stuff based on things that I've taught myself. You know, I'm a, maybe like you, I'm not a person who's like, who went to art school, not a person who has taken, has been heavily trained, but has basically just stumbled along and figured stuff out as he went. And so um, that can actually be challenging sometimes to, I'll just tell you from my own personal experience, to never having really taught except just kind of figured stuff out, to then reverse engineer and figure out like, how do I actually explain what it is I'm doing? Nobody will, uh, I'll do it. And so I spent a lot of time on the iPad class and now also on this class of just saying, what was my process and how could I introduce you to the same steps that I took so that you can feel confident, you can feel creative, you can feel interested and entertained because I don't, it shouldn't be boring. And, and actually with this class, we're going to plunge in almost from the first minute with making something. And we're going to get our, well, I was going to say we're going to get our hands dirty, but hopefully we won't get them too dirty. That would kind of defeat the purpose because I'm trying to teach you how to not do what I do, which is generally get completely spattered with ink. I've kind of figured out like the right way to do that so that doesn't happen. Um, and, uh, you know, just to have some fun. So we're going to do that together. And um, what else? Gregory Concentrate. Yes, that sounds scary. Um, we won't go there. Maybe JJ can tell you about that sometime. What it's like to be locked into a pandemic with just me. So what size Bristol do I recommend for the workshop? Asks Deco Painter and T. What a great name. Um, you know, I just recommended a relatively small pad, a small pad of Bristol. Um, I think it the sizes, nine by 12 maybe. It doesn't have to be too big. And the thing about a dip pen is like, you know, it's not, a big splashy kind of tool. It's really a bit more small in its focus. And also, um, you don't need to buy huge. I wanted, I wanted to keep, let me tell you two things I tried to do. One, keep the art supplies that I recommend to a minimum. I think it's mm, under $20, I think, for all the stuff that you'll need for this. And even that's pushing it. Because a nib is a buck and a half. Uh, a handle is five or six dollars. A thing of Bristol is mm, seven or eight dollars, and a thing of ink could be four or five dollars. Ballparks, but not expensive. So I'm really trying to keep it simple. The other thing is we reduce the price on this workshop, so it's less expensive than any workshop we've done before because I work cheap. 
but also I want you to try this. I want you to take it. I want you to see what it's like to take a workshop with us as well. And that's part of the idea too. How do we, how do we, how can we work together on, and have fun doing this together? Um, Martha Blair Murphy asks a very good question. Can I sign up and view the workshop at a later date? Yes. If you're busy on Saturday, June 12th from noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, if you're busy then, it's not a problem because what's going to happen is after you've signed up for the workshop, well, after you signed up for the workshop, you'll come in and there'll be a couple little videos that you can watch in preparation. But after the workshop ends, in the middle at noonish my time Pacific, um, or sometime that afternoon, you will have access to the recordings of um, that we're using we, the demo recordings that I've made. You'll have access to those almost immediately, and within the next week or so, we're also going to. Um, I think we're going to take the recording, and we're going to take the the question and answer sessions, which are a really important part of this. If you come to it live, you can ask me questions and I will answer them there live in front of you. Um, but also we will then take those things, those little snippets, and we will put those all together on sketchbookschool.com. So you will be able to can come back to these and watch them whenever you need to. And if you didn't get to see it live at all, it's again, not a problem. You can come and, um, Watch it when you do have time. So that's, again, it's this is designed to work for you the way you want it to, not to make you feel like, oh, I've got to get there right then and there. So, okay. Thistle has been torturing herself with crow quills ever since she was a kid. Hmm, that sounds like sort of a serial killer novel or something like that. It begins in a basement, a young girl being tortured with crow quills. What are crow quills, for those of you who don't know? They're very fine... Uh, narrow point dip pens. They're, um, they are a drag to work with, I have to tell you. They make very fine lines. They're very scritchy scratchy. We're not going to be de dealing with those in this workshop. We're going to be dealing with, I I've picked a nib that I think is really easy to start with and easy to control. But and you'll, you'll work away towards crow quills. They'll be part of your arsenal before long. Um, but yes, they are, they are kind of, they are, I don't know. They're torturesome, and I understand what Thistle went through. So, all right, let's move on to other subjects. What else do I want to talk about besides this? Um, ah, yes. Um, you know, as you know, Hanamula, 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 the, the famous German paper mill. Uh, Hanamula, by the way, is... Uh, my friend Joe at Hanamula just told me that Hanamula means uh, basically like hen mill, hen mill, or rooster mill, chicken mill, chicken mill. Chicken mill sounds terrible, but like puppy mill. No, it's not that. It's a mill that has a, its mascot is a hen or a rooster. That's why there's that rooster on the logo. Anyway, they are our sponsor. Um, they have... They're I mean, an amazing company who's been making paper for 500 years. But, um, you know, we've ju they just became our sponsor a few weeks ago, a month ago, a month and a half ago. I forget what it is, fairly recently. And I had some of their uh, materials that Joe has sent me over the years to, to play with and stuff that I have bought because I really, I think they make amazing paper and amazing sketchbooks. But recently, this happened. Hold on a second, and I will show you what it was. Hey, was that the mailman? I'm expecting a package from Hanamula. These are watercolor postcards. Yes, those are nice. This is for Sumi ink painting. Paper for Japanese ink painting. That's really cool. Natural white. Special paper for painting with acrylic paint on it. This is a sketchbook. Sketch paper, Skitsu 120. So that's 120 grams. And then there's this one, which is 190. So that's even heavier quality. I love this paper. It's Bristol paper. And this is the best Bristol I've ever found. And you can use it for ink and pencil and markers and 
uh, dip pen. It's excellent paper. The gray book. This is a nice big one too. So this is all gray paper. And the cappuccino book, which is kind of this bright, light brown paper. It's really nice to draw on. This is Nostalgie, which is, I think the finest paper there is for just drawing with ink or pencil or uh, charcoal colored pencil. It's really, really nice. Really heavy, smooth. Look, huh? you see this? This is that same paper, but this time it's in a sketchbook form. And this apparently it's pronounced Nostalgie as opposed to Nostalgie. I guess that's German, makes sense. Hanumul is a German company. And uh, yeah, this, this paper is almost as smooth as this plastic. It's really nice to draw on. This is Feder, Federl's Zeichenblock, which is again for pen and ink drawing. It's really nice and smooth. This I've been wanting to try. I saw it on the website, but I have never tried it. And this is hand lettering paper. So it's paper just for lettering. Brush pen, pencil, fine liner, really smooth, really nice, and a nice pad. Hey Joe, thanks so much for sending Twiggy all this cool stuff. She's promised to share it with me, not to snack on all of it, and we'll be using it in Draw With Me and other projects. Thanks a lot. Yes, so quite quite a load of awesome stuff that I got, um, and I'm very excited to try it out. Um, oh, Carol, Carol Boss is another one of my friends at Hanamula, and she explains rooster is what it is, not chicken mill. It's rooster mill. Much better. Rooster mill. So, yeah, so we have lots of great stuff. A lot of you guys have know Hanamula and are using it, so that's great. Um, you know, Hanamula's stuff is is becoming more and more available, and um, particularly their sketchbooks are becoming more and more available. They're coming out with new products. There's all kinds of stuff, and I'll be telling you that about it as, as we get more stuff, and I'll be probably giving some of it away to you. Mm -hmm. Yep. One of the bennies of, uh, of having a nice sponsor. So yes, so we're all good. All right. So let me just talk a bit about, oh, I, I want to talk a bit about a new sketchbook because I mentioned in there the, the nostalgie. And nostalgie is, so this is my, this, this is my, um, actually my, um, an old nostalgie sketchbook that I had that I really love. And it's, I figured like, I'm going to show you a little bit of, a little bit of it so you can see also why, how I enjoyed using it. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is, you know, and, and for those of you who aren't really familiar with what I do, this is basically it. I keep a diary, um, you know, in my sketchbook. My sketchbook is just a record of my life, of what I eat, what I do, where I go, what I think, what I experience, what I try out artistically, some big-ass clams that I ate, um, chatting with friends, and his top 12 smells of my childhood. So... What I was doing in this sketchbook was I was working with so many different things, colored pencils and fine liners, of course, but also for me, a really important thing is to be able to use a dip pen. And that's what this is. This is all India ink with a dip pen. And, um, you know, what's nice about using a dip pen also uh, is you can, well, here's all my favorite pens. There you go. This is actually a little bit kind of like what we might do today. The idea is to, um, Take a thing, take a thing, and then explore variations on it, okay? So just for sh to give you a, um, a preview, I'm going to be drawing hats. Hats. Thinking of as many kinds of hats as I can. And I'll tell you why in a second. This isn't a really great reason, but it's sort of an interesting thing to draw. But you could choose something else. So you'll think about that when we get to it. But in the meantime, you know, you could draw all your pens like I did here. Um, you know, and, and so anyway, so I, I like this sketchbook. I've also tried out what I always do when I get a new sketchbook is I try stuff out and I try and see, you know, how do I feel about the different kinds of 
things, you know, how does it work with gouache, how does it work with watercolor. So this is um, kind of what I like to do to tell it is my friend Prosh doing uh, doing stuff with Prosh and drawing friends and you know these kinds of things. So so I basically have found that um, this nostalgie works with more or less everything I throw at it. It's not really watercolor paper. It's not really for wet media. But that's fine, you know, because the pleasures of drawing on really good drawing paper, and this is nice and thick too, you know. I hear that noise. That's the sign of a good one. Um, and also having like a good solid sketchbook that feels good in your hands, that opens nicely, that's all, all important. So anyway, so what happened here is I got a new one, as you saw in the box, a new nostalgie. Um, and it, it, it's, it's kind of big. It's kind of big, so um, I want to, you know, I want to stretch out a bit. Oops, sorry. I want to stretch out, and I want to, you know, just try filling big pages again. It's been a while since I've used a sketchbook quite as big as this. I like the fact that it's also what's called landscape, which means it's, you know, horizontal shaped. So that is what we're going to do. Nostalgie. Yes, John Cromer. I think it's Nostalgie. I know that uh, the folks over at Hanamura say nostalgie. I would think nostalgie, but again, it's German, Deutsche. So, all right, here we go. So what we're going to do is we're just going to draw some hats. Just pick a hat, any hat, any kind of hat you can think of. You know, what would be a good hat to start with? Um, and I'm thinking, you know, I mean, let's start with an obvious one, to me at least. Which, this, Draw a fatter one. This is, uh, you know, this is draw a baseball cap. Again, the idea of this exercise is in part to draw hats, but it's also in part, whoops, it's also to show you what I'm doing. It's also to, um, you know, just find variations on a theme. Variations on a theme. Um, and I think that that is... It's a really great exercise. So you might say, you know what, I'm going to draw cars or I'm going to draw all of my shoes. And I'm just going to fill a page in my sketchbook with something as simple as that. Okay, so you and you, or if you want to, you can draw hats, but you also don't have to draw the same hats I'm drawing. You know, you can just say, I'm going to pick my own series um, and I'm going to... I'm going to do hats that occur to me. So this is not an exercise in necessarily comping my drawings, although certainly you're free to. These are public domain drawings. Well, I guess they are now. Um, so there's kind of like, that's a sort of like a, you know, like a woolly beanie cap. Do you always see these guys, particularly guys with big beards, wearing these caps almost all the time? year round no matter what the temperature is i don't understand how they can do that you know I mean, it seems like a really uncomfortable business but this is sort of a beret right pretty simple maybe give it a bit of bit of uh you know some stuff there let's try um let's try like a hat with a brim, maybe um, some kind of a thing like that. This seems a bit odd, doesn't it? Maybe it has some sort of a jaunty little feather or something like that in it. It's almost like a, I don't know, this is a, could be a man's hat, could be a woman's hat. Sort of looks like it's soft felt, kind of a little misshapen. <clears throat> so yeah. Um, let's see, Connie suggests some kind of a top hat, Dr. Seuss type of top hat. Yeah, so that's just, doc the cat in the hat has that sort of hat like this, right? It's like a kind of almost like a stovepipe hat. 
Most people don't know it, but the cat in the hat was actually based on uh, Abraham Lincoln. That's why it doesn't have a mustache. I'm not going to put the stripes on it. That's too specific. I want to keep these kind of general. But this is sort of a slouchy kind of uh, thing like that. Um, fancy woman top hat that Sean, Sean suggests. I think that's kind of what I just drew. A witch's hat says Sanufi. Yes. What is a witch's hat like? It's kind of like that with a point to it. And it has sort of a brim. This, you know, this looks more like a uh, sorcerer's hat. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. It's a, like a wizard's hat. I haven't really seen a wizard wearing one recently, but th that's what I sort of remember of Ace loosely, is that they would have... Am I making this up? I, I know, this is like this is like uh, a sorcerer's apprentice, Mickey Mouse. All right. So yes, it's that kind of a thing. Um, what else? Uh, cowboy hat. Am I right? What's wrong with this? Um, there we go. It's like that, sort of, with like a thing around it. Does that seem correct? I'm just looking at it on the screen. Yeah. Sort of like a thing like that. Good enough. Um, what about like a sort of 1920s cloche? Cloche, is that what it's called? Cloche, right? Like a lady's hat that sort of, oof, that looks, this is starting to look like a bucket hat, actually. Let me put, maybe if I put it like a late, a bow on it, it makes it a bit more, a bit more of a thing. Um, how about this? Do you know what this is? Elementary, my dear Watson. It's what's known as a deer stalker. How do they come up with a special hat to wear if you're stalking deer? I mean, how often does one even stalk a deer? Let alone need special headwear. <laughs> um, All right. I'm going out. Where's my deer stalker? It's sort of like a sort of like a Sinatra fedora, Sinatra era fedora, you know, with like a small brim. Um what else? How about one of these sorts of things where it's like a, like a, what are these things called? You know, like a sort of trapper, not a trapper, like a, um, yeah, is it a trapper? Like a, like a woodsman would wear, you know, where this is kind of fur, right? That's how it would work, isn't it? These things sort of come down, they have little... Yeah, that's sort of basically the idea, right? A trilby, right? That's true. Thank you. Donna pointed out that it's a trilby, not a fedora. Um, all right, what else? Um, what's it just, oh, I know. How about just one of those sort of like these kinds of, what are those called? Like a, a bucket hat, right? Bucket hat, sort of like that. So, my point again in doing this is to say, let's try and um, just look at the same thing, the same um, category, no, the same, yeah, the same sort of generic category, and then try and 
look at variations in it. You know, I, th I think it's a good thing as an artist for us to do because we so often are um, forced into categories, the things that we see. So it's like if I said to you, I should have, that's what I should have done actually. I should have just said to you, draw a hat. You know, we should have started there. Let's draw a hat and uh, sort of see, like, what do you think of as a hat? And, um, and then sort of start to explore how many actually kinds of hats there are and how, in fact, um, this is actually wrong. This is a sort of a fez. It's meant to be a fez, but it's not quite. Dang. I think a fez is more like that, more angled in. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, so when we start to look at all these variations, we start to go, wow, you know, there's actually so many kinds of hats that, you know, I can explore those as a category, which sensitizes me to the incredible variations there are in the things that I take for granted. Opens your eyes, as it were. Which is part of what we want to accomplish with our art. Is to be more engaged and less prone to, um, you know, to, to jump to conclusions. To Oh, I know. How about... Sombrero. See? Muy bien. Sombreros tend to have sort of like stuff on them, right? Embroidery, do they? Kind of made of woven material in some way, like what are they made of? Straw or something like that, yeah. Um, how about one of the sort of caps, what are these called? Um, you know, it's like sort of, I, I have equate them with Bob Dylan for some reason, like early 60s, but they're also like a newsboy's cap. Isn't that what it is? So, um, what else do we have to, that you're suggesting? Elizabeth Flanagan suggests an, an ass hat. Yeah, I'm not drawing selfies today, so we'll have to come back to that some other time. Um... Come on, folks, hit me with something. A crown. All right. Not exactly a hat, but maybe. Sorry, I lost you there. Jen, do you wear a crown often? What size crown do you wear? Helmet. Um, yeah, we could. Well, we could do this kind of a. Maybe, okay, maybe I'll just do this sort of a. This is almost like an astronaut's helmet. Could be. Is that really a hat? What's well, buzzing? Um, all right. Good. What else? Uh, a fez I drew. I, I at least tried to. That's sort of a fez. Um, a fishing hat. What's a fishing hat look like? Is that sort of like a... It's kind of like this, isn't it? Maybe we'll make this into a fishing hat. All right? You just put some like lures on... Is that what they're called? Yeah, flies. Put some flies on it. Flies. Not, not the insects, but the fishing stuff. So there, that's kind of that. Um, <clears throat> all right. A bike helmet. Oh, I like that idea. Bike helmet. What does that look like? It's sort of kind of down here. And then it has sort of things cut out. Is that right? God, I haven't. Something along those lines. All right. See, it's kind of cool when you see the whole bunch of them, but now we feel like we do need to fill some stuff, a, a yarmulke, like a, um, what else do they call them? A skull cap. A 
little bit hard to tell what that that's what it is, but <laughs> put a little be little button on the top as if it was like a, a beanie. Um, how about a visor? Sort of kind of minimal sort of hat, but a hat nonetheless. Is that right? It looks sort of it looks like I'm in like a G string, but. Um, Maybe it needs to curl down. That's what it is. It needs to curl down a bit. And uh, this needs to be a bit thicker. All right. So, yeah. All right. Um, I had planned on coloring these, not coloring them in, but maybe just giving a bit of indication in another color. Because I'm kind of running out of space here. Space. The final frontier. Yeah, I'm going to go through that, and I'm going to do a bit more of that kind of stuff, just to jazz it up a bit, just to make the page look a bit more interesting. But this is a, a great exercise, in case you haven't figured it out yet, of just find yourself a topic and fill a page. Fill a page in your sketchbook with that topic. You know, it could be, it could be, uh, I think something of something that has a vast number of, like I had heard that there were something like 20,000 species of bees. Did I make that up when we were doing bees last time? God knows what the variations are on those things, but, um, you know, so you could just pick a category and say, I'm going to draw a bunch of different bees, or I'm going to draw um, different kinds of bicycles or different kinds of airplanes. I mean, it's just sort of endless how many, um, you know, just categories you can, and then, and just kind of gives you facility. And the other thing is, and as I'm sure I've said this to you before, is when you draw a big page like this, the individual drawings don't have to be awesome for it to be a really nice page, you know, an interesting page to look at, because there's something about the energy that sort of starts to get created between all these different drawings it's just much more interesting than a single one. So it doesn't really matter. As you can see, some of my, like my yarmulke is not very good, but it's fine. Um, it's fine in aggregation, in, 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 you know, in sum, in large. So that's it. I mean, we just spent, how long do we spend? 15, 20 minutes doing that? Knocking out uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 20. 23 hats, 500 hats of Bartholomew Cubbins. Do you remember that book, Dr. Seuss? Um, yes, Elizabeth points out that, that I had recommended this book, Blackstock's Collections. And uh, Blackstock, in fact, he has a whole page of, of hats, maybe that were, is where I was inspired. He does hats. Um, Sabine is practicing chairs. That's really fun. I did that when I first moved into this house last year, at the beginning of the pandemic. I drew every chair in the house. There were something like a couple dozen chairs. Drew different ones. Hazel suggests um, flowers, of course. Or you could just pick one one particular kind of flower. You could say, I'm just going to draw every kind of rose I can think of. Or orchids. Wow. You know, orchids. Um, are really great. So, um, a Napoleon hat. That's a great one. Didn't think of that one. It's also interesting to try and do ones that um, you you don't need to put the head on, right? So they become drawing. I mean, you could, I guess, just draw in a, you know, the shape of a head underneath it if you really, if it was really essential. Because I'm thinking, would those Napoleon hats work? Without a head, maybe. Anyway, um, but yeah, so you can you can make these decisions, and you can say, uh, you know, you could do an entire sketchbook based on this single theme. And what's great about that also is you sit down and you say, uh, I don't know what to draw. Um, what should I do today? And you could say, Well, I'm just going to draw. I'm, I don't even need to think about it. I just open my hat book, and I'm just going to draw a few more hats. Think of some more, um, some more other headgear to put on. Um, you know, we could think of a clown hat. We could think of um, every kind of helmet, right? Construction helmets, football helmets, 
that bicycle helmet we've covered, but all the different kinds of things. Yeah, this visor isn't good. Maybe it's because I just, I really am kind of repelled by visors. I find them kind of unattractive headgear. So I find, I probably haven't looked at it enough to say, oh yes, that's how one would do that. Um, so, but also it's funny how some hats just by themselves remind you of somebody. You go, oh yeah, like that reminds me of that Spanish cartoon character called Ferdinand, I think. Anyway, um, so yes, shoes. Kathy suggests shoes. Lisa did shells. Nice. Corinne suggests leaves. All the different kinds of leaves that one, uh, you know, I mean, there's so many variations in leaves. And um, Ali says 14 bottles of ink. So, okay, so this, this Christine's drawing her earrings. Whew. Chef's hat, I should have done that, yep. Swim cap with flowers, love that. Yeah, those kinds of, yes, that are made of like the rubber slices of flowers. Uh, C.W. drew horses. Oof, horses are, mm. I mean, bravo, because horses are not easy. Particularly a whole page of them and variations. But you could do zoo animals. You know, or reptiles. I don't know. In endless categories, but pick a category. You know, and just knock out a page and show it to me. So, all right. So, as you know, I at the beginning of each uh, episode, we put up the um, the drawings that you did last time. So, boy, do I not have this URL up here? Hold on a second. I just I know I have it somewhere. So let me just let me just add it now here. Give me one second to just throw this onto the screen. But what I'd love for you to do is to share it with me. So I believe that this is correct. SBS draw with me. So all you need to do is tag, put put on social media, Facebook or um, Instagram or the uh, sketchbook school schoolyard, which you hopefully know about. And uh, yeah, do it. Just tag it, hashtag SBS Draw with me. We'll collect them all. And next week, I'll sh show all your collections at the beginning here. The archive, drawing after years. Does that mean that you are returning to drawing after years of not drawing? Tell me more of the archive. That's a very interesting icon that you have there. Um, so yeah, different kinds of sewing machines. Are there really that many variations? Probably. I don't know that much about them. So. Um, yeah, so share it with me. As I said, hashtag SBS Draw with me, um, and we will add it to the collection. What else did I want to tell you? Um, I, you know, because some of you are new, I would not mind if I could just share some stuff here. Okay, Whoa, that's a lot of stuff. All right, let me just go through this so you know what it is. So as I said, me SBS Draw with me. That's the URL at the top. Okay, and next, text with me. Yes, I have a lot of people who text with me every day or week. Um, I send out stuff. I do a drawing. I send out um, a text, a little photo of it. I find a cool thing that I'm interested in, an article, a website, uh, an event. I'll share it with you. Um, I think of some stupid joke. I'll send that to you too. I try not to send it when you're sleeping, but, and I don't do it that often, a few times a week, maybe. Um, you can email with me, draw with me at sketchbookschool.com if you have something you want to say to me. You can listen to my podcast. So yes, so woof, this podcast comes out every Monday. It's short. It is short. It is good, good and short. So um, it is a short podcast, often under 10 minutes. And it's basically um, a little essay on creativity, what it is to be an artist, what are the issues that we face, and I talk about that. And similarly, I also send out an email every Friday. That's tomorrow. I'm going to be sending one out. I write an e essay, again, relatively short, but just to keep you going, keep you thinking, keep you feeling like an artist. So, um, that is the idea behind my... So if you go to dannysessays.com, you can sign up for it. You know, it's not a marketing thing. It's just 
me sending out stuff with jokes. There's jokes. There's generally jokes in most of the stuff that I do. Not always good jokes. That's not guaranteed, but some attempt at humor is there. Um, so, yeah, that is there. So the podcast, okay, I think we've covered it all. Sorry <laughs> for that barrage of uh, announcements, but, you know, it's, a good to, I, it's good to remind you of this, this cool stuff. We make a lot of cool stuff, and uh, I want you to make sure that you get it. So don't forget one last time, don't forget about the workshop bit.ly slash Danny Dip. That's the, or you can just go to scheduleschools.com workshops, sign up there. Um, what else? That's about it. What's the pen that I was using? I was using a Windsor and Newton fine liner. Thanks for asking. An 08 Windsor Newton fine liner. They're the best. If you've never tried one, I heartily recommend them. Uh, and uh, that's about it. Is there anything I've forgotten? Oh, yes, my friend here. <laughs> Here's Twiggy. Twiggy wants to say hello. Twiggy, everybody enjoyed your video. Have you used up all that paper yet? Or do you need Hanumulu to send you some more? I think she's kind of sleepy. She was uh, up very early with me. We go for a walk at 5 o'clock every morning. Oh, I know she's grunting, groaning at the thought of it. <laughs> I'll be out there to play with you soon. All right. I got to go. Um, Spark After Party. We were going to move it to be later, but today we'll start it at the usual time, which is in seven minutes. But uh, I'll see you then. And I'll see the rest of you next week. Same time, same place, different hats. We will get together then. Bye-bye.